Hello, my name is Mothani Gitao. Welcome to another episode of Just Doing Life, the podcast, a space where we explore all the parts of life that we do not like to say out loud. After all, we are all just winging it. Welcome to another episode of Options. My name is Muthoni Gitao. If you do not know what Options is, Options is a series by Just Doing Life, the podcast, where I sit down and tell you all the random things that I have learned through my life, um, share some tips and tricks that can help you if you are going through the same thing, or remind you that you're not alone if you are going through the same things or you've lived through the same things. We have done an episode on the things that I have learned from relationships. There's a lot but we have like that was our first episode we've also done an episode on grace today we'll be talking about adulting yes the scam that is adulting that's going to be the conversation for today on options there's a little something we do we have homework okay we usually do homework and in the last episode the homework that we had was about um trying to trying to figure out where your emotions were stemming from, what was causing them, to figure out how to work through them. And the exercise was pretty simple. You're supposed to have um, a newspaper or something, written material on one hand, um, on one end with a pencil, and then asking yourself questions using your non-dominant, ha non-dominant hand. And you're supposed to mark out words as you ask yourself questions. It was more about like, how are you feeling? What is causing these feelings? Um, and then you just pick whatever words pop out. Did I do this exercise? Yes, I didn't use a newspaper. However, I used a book and a pencil because I, I use a pencil all the time. So I decided to use a pencil and I just marked in a, in a book that I was reading. So I just open a random page, ask myself a question and then mark whatever word pops up. And I'm like, what the hell does this mean? And it's a very interesting exercise because I think what it does for you is it makes you sit with your thoughts and examine your thoughts, where they're coming from, are they real or not? Um, and it, I would say it was helpful in that moment because I was dealing with, um, you know, those, those thoughts of sometimes when you feel like you're not worthy of things, uh, you're not like fighting with people or whatever, like, okay, maybe you are not fighting per se, but misunderstandings or whatnot. And then you end up questioning yourself. So for me, the exercise really worked well because I was in a moment where I was sort of questioning myself a lot and it helped me realize where that was coming from and what it was about. Okay. So yay me. I hope you did your exercise, your homework. If you did, please let me know what, what, what that was like in the comment section and wait for later on as we go through uh, what homework you'll be getting from this week's episode. It's going to be very, very important. Uh, well, I think they all are, but we're using the homework. Basically, it's a, it's a self-love exercise. That's what the homework is about. It's trying to find a way to show yourself love every single week. So if you don't end up intentionally doing it by taking time out during your everyday life i force you to do it when you're watching this episode and then you'll feel guilty and actually do it because in the next episode i'm going to ask you did you do your homework and then you're going to be like oh crap i didn't and then now you'll be forced to do it so i'm forcing you to show yourself some self-love yay <laughs> That's what that's about. Remember to follow us on social media. The handle is at JDL, the podcast. That's on Twitter. That's a lie. I always, I don't know why I always go to Twitter. That's on TikTok and Instagram. On Twitter, you can use the hashtag. I know you people call it X now. I, okay, I know people call it X now. I don't know about you. I am refusing to board that train. It's always going to be Twitter. A ch when a child has been named by their mother, who am I to come give them another name? That's a very good question. You just don't come and say, you know what? I don't like the name your mother gave you. I'm going to start. It's giving colonizer. You know? Because it's only colonizer who be coming and be like, I know that your mother named you um, this. And then it's a whole Kunta Kinte moment. So, <laughs> yeah, it's still going to be Twitter. As I was saying, I digressed. As I was saying, on Twitter, you can use the hashtag JDL, the podcast, in case you want to share any thoughts, feelings, um, whatsoever about this episode or previous episodes, about the homework. If you also want to share about your homework over there, I'll be happy to hear about it. Ah, I've just remembered on episode one, I had mentioned that we we're going to have a form in every episode where if you don't feel comfortable enough to share your findings from your homework bravely on the comment section you could share it anonymously and then we could read through it 
in other episodes. So I will make sure to have that form. And then we'll have a second form for any suggestions. Like if you want to hear my take on any particular topics, uh, uh, lessons I've learned from something in particular, if ever it's something like I'd be willing to share, I'll definitely would look through that. So we'll have that in the description slash um, show notes, depending on where you are consuming this podcast from. We are available on all audio platforms i'm saying all because i signed up for all of them so if they didn't take me they're being racist okay it's their fault so back to that just doing life the podcast that's where you'll find us my personal handle is i am Muthoni Gitao. let's talk adulting right let's just talk about it i've already i'm already biased towards adulting because the first thing i said yeah it's a scam the title says that adulting is a scam and i listen whoever came up with this concept needs to be beaten up in the street somewhere eh, just whoever whoever i am cursing I, I don't curse people but i'm cursing whoever came up with the concept of adulting because what is this nonsense and then we're also adulting at a time where i don't know about everyone else or other generations i feel millennials have had to constantly adapt I think if, uh, you know, the way they give different generations, um, type of names, blah, blah, blah. The one I would give, uh, the millennials in particular would be the adaptive generation, because the one thing we've done is we've adopted a lot. We're always adapting to new, we adapt to new changes all the time. We started off playing outside, being very analog, and then the internet was introduced during our time, and we all had access to the internet, and then now we had to learn how to use things with the internet. We used to use the Kadoo days, and then now we have the smartphones, and then uh, we used to consume media one way, and then now we have all these other ways to consume media. School systems are changing. Uh, we lived through a freaking pandemic called um, COVID-19, We've so well, um, um, survive would not be the word that I use, but we had to adapt through that. We, we are, I think we, we are also living through times where there's a lot of violence in the world and we are privy to it. It's not hidden. There'd be violence in the world and then you'd only hear about it through the news. And it was always like very small snippets because the news were like, what, 30 minutes when you would watch like the 7 p.m. news. It's just 30 minutes and they have to fit in not just stuff that's happened in your country, but globally in the 30 minutes. And they also had to include sports and business and weather. And what was the other thing that they were doing? All the things. Then at 9 p.m. they do like one hour and then they'd have to summarize everything. And still in that one hour, sometimes they'd also bring guests and a panel and talk to them and all that. So when we were consuming news or as we'd consume news, I don't think we were getting as much information as we do get today. Right now, you just open one of the many social media platforms we have and you'll find news or information about something happening somewhere in the world, be it Palestine and what's happening there. We were told it's Palestine. Yes, we're corrected. Palestine, what's happening there? Iraq, what's happening? Lebanon, Congo, Sudan, uh, here, home, Uganda, Nigeria. It doesn't matter where it is. You are aware of stuff that's happening everywhere. And to an extent, it's like a beautiful thing because now you also have access to people you didn't have access to before and then to the other downside of it to the downside of this the bad side because yeah they say things can have like a good side and a bad side the bad side of this is that as you're getting all this connection uh building these connections with people all over the world you're also finding out all the terrible things that happen all over the world and it's all happening at the same time as you're dealing with your own terrible things in your country, in this case being Kenya, because yeah, I don't know where we signed up to be the strongest soldiers, but I would like to remove us from the list. Whoever was putting down um, the list of the strongest soldiers, please remove Kenya from that list. We are trying not to be the strongest soldiers. Thank you very much. Out of the way, I am a millennial. I did sort of grew up in the 90s and the 2000s, the early 2000s. And uh, I became an official adult. When does someone, you become an official adult when you turn 18? I don't think you should become an adult when you turn 18, but that's a story for another day. I think 18 is still too young to become an adult. Uh, even 30, I think people should become adults at 30. 
where you're considered an adult should be 30 years old. So when we're talking about being an adult and adulting, we're talking about like this whole thing of taking care of yourself, doing things for yourself, acting as a soul being that is fully responsible for themselves. Some of us start this way earlier than others. There's people who start it at 18, as I mentioned. There are people who start at like 16, 14, depending on the environments that they grew up in, the parents that they have, um, cultures, schooling, and things like that. One of the things I don't understand is, okay, I judge heavily, is when really, really young kids at like 8 to 10 are like in boarding school. And boarding school forces you to become an adult a lot sooner because you're solely responsible for yourself. You have to do a lot of things for yourself. And to an extent, the assumption is that teachers will also do stuff for you. But in truth, the most they do is just be this um, authority figure that is in the same space as you, that judges you, beats you up, um, mistreats you punishes you whenever they feel like you're not following their rules and stuff like that but in truth you sort of do everything else for yourself other than like the cooking right but also it's very possible for you to miss things like lunch because if you're caught up doing something else i also have a lot of feelings about boarding schools in general one i think they are breeding ground for prison like they just prepare you for prison there's someone who actually mentioned that the education system is built to train people to become prisoners because you can't do things at any given time or when you feel like it the bells and the times and all that um so there's people who would say that that is meant to prepare you for the corporate life I want to work at night and not during the day. Sometimes I just don't feel like Monday is the day to do things or Thursday and I want to do it on Saturday and Sunday instead. But the systems we live in don't allow for this. That's adulting for you. So basically they start training us from when we were very, very young to be people who follow some set rules, their societal set rules. And whenever you color outside those lines, you're weird, you're ostracized, you are, um, they try to beat you back into being in line and stuff like that. So pretty insane. Adulting is the absolute ghetto. Okay. So that being said, don't be in a rush to do it. If you're in a position to wait a bit longer and by wait a bit longer, I mean things like moving out of, of your parents' house or your guardian's house and starting to do things by yourself, paying your own bills, all of them, um, figuring out what to eat. Let me tell you, one of the hardest parts of being an adult is figuring out what to Do you realize how often people eat? Like you have to figure out what to have for breakfast, what to have for lunch, what to have for dinner. Are you having snacks in between? Remember to drink your water. When you're not an adult, there's always someone reminding you these things. Or someone preparing for these things for you. Like if you're living at home, for a good ex example is when you're living at home, you don't have to think about what's being cooked. Someone is doing the thinking for you. If it's your mom, your um, the house help, or there's someone in the kitchen taking care of food. Maybe you guys already have like a calendar because they don't want to have to think about it every day. So you have a set calendar. For someone like me, it is Josephine who cooks for us every single day and I don't have to think about it right but when you live alone I one of the things this is like when I'm not at work it's it's annoying even when you go to a restaurant and then there's like ah there's an array of things and you have to choose one and you have to be like what am I in the mood for and then you have to go through the list and then choose something and decide what it is that you want it's exhausting that's one of the most exhausting things as an adult. And be, the worst part is you have to do it every day. It's not a one-time thing. You do it every day. You have to figure out what to eat every single day, multiple times a day. And then you have to make it happen. That's the second worst part. It's like after you've made the decisions, like, yes, the answer is rice. Is the rice cooking itself? No. Um, you have to decide, am I cooking the rice? Am I ordering in? Am I going to a restaurant? Does this restaurant have the rice I want? <laughs> 
also when it's rice what kind of rice do i like there's times where i will start cooking and then get to a point and be like yeah i don't see like it has suddenly become too much work we'll finish it tomorrow or there's times i'll be ambitious and then i'll buy i'll buy all the things that i want to cook i'll buy the ingredients and then when it's time to cook and i'm like hey i am a completely different person now i don't know the muthoni who thought she was going to cook but this muthoni right here is okay with eating popcorn and sleeping and sometimes it's as minor of an inconvenience as you sat down you got to the house and you're like ah I'm going to rest for like 10 minutes and then I'll start cooking. In those 10 minutes you become a different person and this person is no longer interested in cooking and that is how you don't cook and you eat popcorn for dinner and you say yeah I'm an adult. No one can tell me nothing. That's the the cool part of being an adult. There's there's cool bits to it, okay? Being an adult is things like you can eat cake at any time. It doesn't need to be a special occasion. You can eat ice cream at any time whether it's raining or whatever. It does not matter. There's certain things that are fun. If you want to spend a whole day doing nothing and napping, you can do that depending on how you've set up your days. So there's some cool bits. However, I still insist the bad outweighs the good. The bad of being an adult outweighs the good. For me, I feel the biggest bad of being an adult is the amount of thinking you have to do. I feel like I keep saying everything is the worst thing, but the amount of thinking that goes into being an adult is annoying. You have to think about everything. You have to think when you're crossing the road. You know when you They'll hold your hand and say 20 dv. As an adult, I have to stand there. I have to look left, look right, look left again. Look up in case a boda boda falls on you because this is Nairobi. You have to like sometimes I I wonder who decided I am capable to take care of a person and that person is me but like who decided this because i don't think i signed up for this i don't remember signing on the dotted line and saying yes i approve it's annoying so back to don't be in a rush it if you're in a position where you don't have to start adulting until later on please do it if you're working cuz sometimes i feel like there's this idea where someone's like oh i've started my first job so the next natural thing to do is to find myself a house and move out and do this no if you're comfortable doing that job from your parents house or your guardian's house or wherever it is where someone's taking care of you do it make small small contributions there cuz they're not going to match they're not going to be the same as the contributions you would make if you're doing but if you're living by yourself because when you're living by yourself when you're an adult when you're adulting you are fully responsible for you fully it does not matter you want drinking water you buy it you want to buy skincare products and they're expensive you buy them you don't have sugar in the house it's up to you steamer tokens it's up to you that food that you're struggling to cook you're still the one buying it so when you're in someone else's house and there's like shared responsibilities it's really helpful because all you have to do is you come with like some sugar and then once in a while you like buy tokens and then they're like yeah she contributes to the household that's really nice and it's not going to be looked at we are not fanya kazi so you need to pay for everything in this household so it helps when you have such an environment where that is encouraged what that does as well is by the time now you're ready to start adulting by yourself and like move out you have your savings in order you get to you wouldn't start the same place um someone who possibly started at 18 after their first job after they were kicked out by their parents started where it's like eh hey, i started by couch surfing and then i had a bed sitter but i didn't have a bed i only had a mattress and a stove to cook my food you might be able to move out and maybe let's say you're 30 you move into like your first apartment is like a fancy apartment that the rest of us are also moving into like at 30 30 something but it has to ha- we've had we've had to build up to it but then for you that's like your first apartment it's like sometimes when i see certain people where they're like it's taken them a while but their first car is like a fancy car it's not a it's not like a starter car they're like they just go straight because they didn't have to build up to it so it's sort of similar where you have your fancy apartment you can buy all the furniture pieces that you want in one go because you you've you know you've built up your money and stuff like that so if you don't have to rush it please don't rush it take your time and do it at the pace that feels comfortable to you where you, where you feel like now nah, i'm ready now i feel like i can do this the way i want to do it so don't be rushed by the fact that people are like ah 
you're 25 and you're still living in your mother's house. Yes, I'm still my mother's child. Me, met and if the option to move home was there, I would still be living in my mother's house. But that's a story for a completely different day, okay? The other thing that I'd say is if you have resources or support, lean on it. As an adult, that's not something that comes easy. Um, I think one of the things that happens also is the people you grew up with, you end up growing apart. So if you have a support system that's there for you, you have your family, be it friends, whatever it may be, you have some sort of support system, lean into that because it's very, very important because adulting, you come out here, yeah, you go, you have a boss who calls you names or shouts in the office and that. into the support system that you have because you have to remind yourself because when you're out there you're dealing with people and all their bs so you have to have a support system that helps you when you are not in those spaces or once you leave those spaces that can be triggering that can be exhausting that take away from you that way as you go into the world and it takes 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 you also have a place where you're fulfilled where you're given where people are pouring into you so i would say most definitely one of the most important things you need to do is build a support system it can be friends it can be family one thing you have to also realize is some people have a head start in this life. They might not like to admit it when people are told, yeah, you have certain privileges that other people don't have. And then people are like, no, I built this by myself. I'm on my own. I've done. But then certain privileges that they have that they don't recognize they have are something as simple as being able to live at home. You can live. I don't have to take care of you anymore. I don't have to pay your bills anymore. I don't have to do anything for you anymore. You're on your own. And there's others who are told, ah, you, if you want to be 60 and in this house, me, I don't care. It's up to you. The house is always open to you. So that's a privilege that some people have that others do not. Others have the privilege of being able to continue studying and their parents paying for it, even if they don't have work. There's certain people who will go to PhD level where it's just like back to back to back and their parents completely pay for that. But others will be like, after I've paid for your diploma, that's as far as I can pay for you. You go find a job and then you have to pay everything else for yourself if you want to continue. So if you have that kind of a head start, use it. Not everyone has that kind of privilege. So don't compare yourself also to people who have those kinds of privileges and stuff. You don't know what else is happening, but don't think that then they are better people or they're doing this thing way better than you because sometimes having back to the support thing, having that kind of support, it makes the journey easier for some people. And unfortunately, the journey can be harder for others for lack of support and lack of resources in that regard. So you have to recognize that we are not all, we might be, look like we are on the same journey, but our journeys are very, very different in like we can be going to the same destination, but our journeys are very, very different in how we get there. The obstacles that we have to deal with, the hurdles we have to jump through, all those things, they can vary depending on, depending on, um, what was I going to say? Where we're born, environment, who you're born to, the country, sometimes the country you're born into is the privilege or the disadvantage in this case, because Kenya and uh, politicians and whatever so you have to recognize these things and take that into account don't blame yourself sometimes those other than in we'll get into that but i for those who are already here and we're adulting i will refer you to the previous episode we did about grace <laughs> the importance of showing yourself grace remember you're human remember this these people who have a head start we are not all doing life the same way we are all doing life how we can where we can we're not on the same path we're not on the same journey we all have different destinations sometimes you might have the same destination as someone else but the journey is different so for those of us who are already on this bandwagon um and you're over there just thinking wow uh i don't remember signing up for this yeah same but also remember to show yourself grace remember to handle yourself with care you are worthy, you are important, you deserve to be here. And you, whatever you're doing, it's enough. You're doing, you're doing good. 
you're, you wake up and you go and you do the things and you deal with the way the world is because the world is fucked up right now. Let's just be honest. The world is messed. It's insane. Me, I don't understand how how we are still like just living. It doesn't add up. But you are living through these times, especially my millennials. Hey, take heart. You have to always remember that you're human. Adulting might be the ghetto. Sometimes I feel I'm not a great fan of hope. I'll tell you why. Because hope is something that I feel. I feel hope is used to excuse bad things happening to you in the moment. Because people will just be like, you're hoping that all these things will lead to something big, will lead to something better, will lead to something worthwhile. So you're telling yourself that then it's okay that I'm dealing with ABC because the hope is that it grows into something else. Sometimes it... better life or build a better life or have access to certain things that they want and they never get them it happens it does happen sometimes that it doesn't get better so the hope that things will get better sometimes is the driving force it's the thing that keeps people going you keep fighting you keep moving and you're like yeah we've got this hope for a better future da -da -da -da, all the stuff and then you just, you are out. You're a goner. So hope we're not friends. I prefer things. It's, I'm not saying don't hope. I think we can all have whatever relationship works for you with hope. For me, I just know my relationship with hope is not that great. So instead of that, I think I've gotten to a point where I just accept things as they are. I'm just like, eh, hey, okay. And those ones for even though me amwa, sawa, even though kuko, kumenyasha, nandio nenda nyumbani, like, okay, I guess I'll get rained on because I'm already out here. What am I going to do? I'm already in a place where I can't, I can't seek refuge somewhere. So I've gotten to a point where so I know it takes a while. It takes a lot of efforts as well. But I've gotten to this point where I'm just like, I am, I think it comes for me, it comes from a point of, getting tired of hoping for things to change and they don't and two when you're tired of constantly fighting it gets to a point where you don't have the energy to fight anymore so you say it is what it is and i don't have the energy for this so i am no longer going to fight it i'm no longer going to be shana or whatever i'll just take it in stride niseme liwe liwalo we survive if we survive we don't if we don't and there are certain things that, of course, you can't just be nini for. You can't just be, okay, we accept it as it is. You still call out the BS. I think there's things that still deserve to be called out. I'm talking about the things, those things about, about life, about adulting. You're like, being an adult is difficult. I'm just not going to fight it anymore. It's not easy being an adult. It's annoying. It's difficult. And then I'm like, yeah, I'm just not going to fight it anymore. I'm an adult. Uh, sometimes rent will be late. Sometimes it will be paid before the month is over. Yay. Sometimes it will be paid ahead of time. Yay. Sometimes you will deal with clients and they're difficult and they don't pay you on time. That sucks. But it takes a lot more energy to keep fighting. And sometimes you just don't have the energy. And that's part of being an adult, which is very annoying. The last thing that I'm going to say about adulting and the difficulties of adulting is it's not your fault. These systems work the way they work because they were built to work the way they work. One thing I have learned, whenever you look at the systems that are in place, whether they are working or failing, trust you me, someone, it's by design. Someone has made sure that that's how it works. Someone has built it to fail. Someone has built it to
design. They're built that way by design. So adulting uh, is built the way it is by design. There's someone who was talking about the reason, uh, like it was about advertising, I believe. And they were talking about how they would they can't reduce it was about reducing the work week to having four days four days of working and like three days of resting and it was like no if people are too rested people won't buy things so we're put in you're put on a, a hamster wheel where then you f you have to fill in this void using consumerism so that's how capital capitalism is surviving by making sure that people are so dissatisfied with living and with their lives that they have to fill in these holes by buying things to make themselves feel, feel better, which unfortunately I'm going to make you do at the end of this um, episode as well. Uh, because when we talked about the self-love things, we do things that cost us money to make ourselves feel better at times as well. So these systems are built the way they're built because someone wanted it to be like that people sat somewhere and agreed so whenever you're going through the streets and you're like yo adulting is the absolute ghetto imagine it's not your fault it's not because of you it's not because you're not adulting vizuri enough it's not because you are a terrible adult terrible adults exist yes we don't refute that but when the adulting bit itself like the having to show up to work even when you don't want to um having sleeping issues because you're doing so much and you have to work three four jobs just to pay your bills it's not because you're not doing enough it's because the systems were built like that they were built to put people in those positions so it's not your fault it's not on you and i'll hold your hand saying that again it is not your fault that adulting is had it's not that you're doing it terribly wrong the systems have been built to make it difficult for you and to make you feel that way so that you can also spend more money trying to make yourself feel better doing other things am i still gonna go spend money yeah because now it gets to a point where you're like it's the least i can do i'm gonna eat ice cream to feel better because what else am I going to do? I still have to show up to work. I still have to do this. I still have to do that because I still have bills to pay. I still have this. <sighs> One of the things I honestly feel we did wrong as the human race was we invented all these things um, in terms of like you have to pay for things. I believe we were put here to experience life. And then in our experiences, some people were like, no, we need to have a hierarchy. We need to have upcoming episodes, and we're going to be talking about the downside of having to be paid for your creative work. So it's going to be a conversation that I'm going to have with like an amazing, amazing person. So look forward to that. Anyway, back to the thing I was saying, um, I think we we're put here to just experience life. But then people being people, because I look at birds, I look at other animals and I'm like, all they do is just, they just live. There's, of course, there's the order, like even in the animal kingdom, some animals are prey, others are predators. And even in this whatever we are also animals there's prey and predators and we also exist in a society that's built the same exact way so it's unfortunate that this is where we are but i honestly wish i could experience life the way it was meant to be experienced without all the shenanigans where you just you live in nature you do the things that excite your soul you hang out with people that excite your soul um and then you just live but now we are just surviving and that's what most of adulting is unfortunately just surviving or just existing depending on where you are or who you are that's my rant about adulting let's let's be honest that's what it was um it's the absolute ghetto i don't like it over here um but yeah this week's homework <laughs> capitalism yeah I want you to buy yourself flowers for no particular reason. It can be a bouquet. It doesn't have to be expensive. You can buy yourself a stem. 
like you can there's places where you can buy a a rose stem for like 15 shillings or 20 shillings buy yourself a flower and then for the next week what you're going to do with this flower you're just gonna keep changing its water keep trimming it and keep and i want you to show this flower i love like it's you like it's the talk to it the way you want to talk to yourself change the water like really nurture it i know it's gonna die this flower this bouquet whatever it is i want you to really take care of it as if it's an extension of you that's the exercise for this week i am gonna go by myself nini and i'll take photos and we'll have them in the next episode and in the people who don't watch the audio if you check the website we'll have the photos of whatever flowers i get in there uh, the website is muthonigetao.com we also do post our podcast episodes there so yes if you'd want to see the photos they'll be there they'll be on my twitter and on our instagram page i will update ah actually that's what i'll do i'll take a photo and we'll post it every single day as I'm not sharing it in some videos, and we'll post that on the Instagram stories at uh, JDL. And you can also tag us in yours if you're doing the exercise this week. JDL, the podcast, that's our Instagram and TikTok handle. That's what we're going to do. I want you to buy yourself flowers for no reason. It doesn't have to be something fancy, like whatever it is. Like as You can even pick flowers. If you're somewhere, you can go pick flowers, pick a couple of flowers, show them love as if they're an extension of you. The way you take care of them delicately, that's the, that is, this one is longer than the other one because you'll still have to take care of the flowers. But I want you to really pour yourself into it. Just naturally take care of it before it dies and until it dies. And then we all share photos. I want to see who's going to do this challenge with me because I think that w- that's going to be fun. I'm going to get mine today. From Friday when this episode drops, I'm going to show the fast, I'm going to start sharing the fast photos and I'll just indicate day one, day two, day three, day four, whatever. Do this exercise with me. I think it's going to be really, 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 really fun. Um, We're learning to show ourselves love. And sometimes it's in doing those things. We're like taking care of a flower does not seem like self-care. Buying yourself flowers is like, yeah, showing yourself love. Because like me, I buy people flowers all the time. So it's going to be a good, I think it's a good thing. One, buying yourself flowers. And then two, it can be your favorite flowers. It can be whatever flower. It doesn't matter. Two. I think for me, the idea of taking care of it as if it's an extension of yourself. So you can't talk badly to it. It's going to be like the grace thing. You can't talk bad to it. You can't talk nasty to the flower. You will add water. You'll keep changing the water. So if the water looks murky, it looks some type of way, switch out the water. Basically, that flower is an extension of you or that bouquet is an extension of you. And then let's see what happens to the plants. Let's just see, right? Because nature is a beautiful thing. Thank you <laughs> for listening slash watching this episode, depending on where you're consuming it. Uh, options episode three. So this was options. I don't know how I say Like, I feel like I keep saying options differently. It's like, we got options. I We keep saying it differently, but that's the whole idea. Even with the self-love bit, it's like we have options on how we can do different things. And this is one of the ways that we can show ourselves love. And one of the things that I want us to do with this episode is to learn to show ourselves love and to learn to receive love from ourselves. And then we know how we receive love and how we give love. Okay, that's the whole point. Thank you for being a part of this episode. I will see you in the next one. Remember to follow us on social media. Subscribe. Um, Yeah, there's the subscribing, the following, the thingy on all the platforms. Please do all that. JDL, the podcast. I am Muthoni Gitao. That's my personal handle. MuthoniGitao.com. That's the website. I will see you back here with the next episode of Options. And we'll be talking about abandoning yourself or self-abandonment in relationships. I'm super excited for that episode as well. So I will see you back here on Friday. But before that, I'll see you on Monday with just doing life a little and hopefully our guest episodes are going to come back this october so yay i feel like that was one long goodbye but i will see you next time bye bye